Good morning, everyone. Grace and peace be with you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm so glad for us to be together. I have just a couple of announcements. First, I just want to welcome everyone this morning. Uh, I am so mindful of what a gift it is for us to be able to gather Sunday by Sunday. I also want to let you know that we continue to be vigilant about all important public health markers. Uh, in fact, the vestry will be meeting with a physician who has been advising and consulting all through these months. And if we need to adjust, we will adjust and carry on. I want to say thank you to everyone uh, who helped with a beautiful birthday party for our Isabel this past Friday for her 100th birthday. It was a beautiful, beautiful gathering, and I am so grateful for that. Um, finally, I hope that you'll put um, September 12th on your calendars. It's our kickoff Sunday, and we will kick off whatever this new year will be. God bless you all.
Lord be with you. Let us pray. Lord of all power and might, the author and giver of all good things, graft in our hearts the love of your name, increase in us true religion, nourish us with all goodness, and bring forth in us the fruit of good works, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lived and reigned with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated.
gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Christ. When the Pharisees and some of the scribes who had come from Jerusalem gathered around Jesus, they noticed that some of his disciples were eating with defiled hands, that is, without washing them. For the Pharisees and all the Jews did not eat unless they thoroughly washed their hands, thus observing the tradition of the elders. And they do not eat anything from the market unless they wash it. And there are also many other traditions that they observe, the washing of cups, pots, and bronze kettles. So the Pharisees and the scribes asked Jesus, why do your disciples not live according to the tradition of the elders, but eat with defiled hands? He said to them, Isaiah prophesied rightly about you hypocrites, as it is written, His people honors me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. In vain do they worship me, teaching human precepts as doctrines. You abandon the commandment of God and hold to human tradition. Then he called the crowd again and said to them, Listen to me, all of you, and understand. There is nothing outside a person that by going in can defile. But the things that come out are what defile. For it is from within from the human heart that evil intentions come. Fornication, theft, murder, adultery, avarice, wickedness, deceit, licentiousness, envy, slander, pride, folly. All these evil things come from within, and they define a person. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
Pharisees were the keepers of the law in Jesus' day, and they expected the Jews to follow their lead no matter what the context. They believed that it was the only way to be faithful to God. The purity laws were especially important because they existed to keep things holy. When the priests and scribes discovered that Jesus' disciples were eating without washing their hands, they became angry. Hand washing was a ritual started by Moses and the Israelites. It was something they would do before entering a holy place. By the time Jesus came along, hand washing had been extended to something that would be done before eating and had been one of the most strictly observed of all the purity laws. In the mind of the Pharisees, there were no exceptions. But Jesus considered the context of the law, and the context was that many of his disciples were fishermen and peasant farmers and didn't always have access to clean water. So he became angry with the Pharisees for being so rigid in their observance of this law. And he called them hypocrites. Quoting from the prophet Isaiah, he accused the priests of only paying lip service to God and following the letter of the law instead of the spirit of the law. It was just as strong a rebuke as overturning the money changers' tables. He was tired of his father's house being defiled by words and deeds. When you think about it, this story actually strikes a little too close to home considering what we've all been through in protecting ourselves against the pandemic. Washing our hands and all the surfaces that we touched became a ritual that none of us wanted but we did it out of fear, fear of becoming sick. What fear was causing the Pharisees to be so rigid in following their laws? I think it was a fear of losing the importance of who they were and what they were doing in the temple. It was fear of losing control and influence in the temple and in their community. collapse if the laws and rituals which have been in place since Moses weren't protected and upheld by them. That made them fixated on what was going on around them instead of what was going on inside of them. Jesus knew that purity and holiness were obtained by nurturing what was on the inside and had nothing to do with how clean anything was on the outside. Jesus believed that any religious practice was supposed to bring life and health to the community. And what he observed was that the temple leaders were doing just the opposite. They were preventing the love and the mercy of God from being experienced. Jesus didn't say not to observe purity laws. He didn't want the observance of them to interfere with the law of the heart, which is to love God and love your neighbor. Unfortunately, there was never any middle ground of understanding between Jesus and the Pharisees, at least in not in Jesus' lifetime. The more the Pharisees saw change in their culture, and they saw a lot of it, the more they clung to the outward practices of their faith, whether those practices still made sense or not. And it's hard to blame them for that. Many of us do the same thing. Which may be one of the reasons that, early in the summer, David gathered us together and suggested that we look at some of the things we do, including right here on Sunday morning. Thinking as a Pharisee, 
I wondered what he might be thinking about in changing things that have been a tradition in his church for generations. <laughs> but then I realized that in the last year and a half, we have all been creating new ways to do those traditional things. We put anthems together with choir members singing in remote locations. How do we do that? We had a Christmas pageant entirely outdoors with a completely different feel to it than recalling that first Christmas night. We're serving communion in one kind, in ketchup cups. Do we want to continue to use ketchup cups when we're able to gather once again around the communion rail? Probably not. But why not review what we do and most likely take for granted to make sure that the reason for doing them still exists? It may not be enough to simply do things because we've always done it that way. Because what we do in the name of tradition still speaks to our hearts and strengthens our faith and shapes us into the people God wants us to be. So is it wrong to be a Pharisee? No, I don't think so. Neither is it wrong to be a skeptic. What's wrong is insisting to be right and to have our way, which leaves no room for that middle ground of understanding, that sacred place that Jesus knew so well, and where God's law of love is always at work in us. Amen. stand and confess the faith of the church in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God.
us to the proper use of your creation. For goodness and honor, fear and justice and protection. For all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble. For those who For the peace and unity of the Church of God. We will exalt you, O God, our King. We pray for all who have died, especially remembering Man Stark and Jeff Sis, that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom. on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God.
Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. For you are the source of light and life. You made us in your image and called us to new life in Jesus Christ our Lord. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name.
Hallelujah. Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Christ. 
Christ, the bread of heaven.